makes the only comparison that you are offering all day long. My question is soulmate versus twin flame and how the difference is between that. Um, like when you have synchronicities with someone intensely, what does that mean? Well, people want to romanticize alignment and that really is what it is. In other words, you all come in clusters. Your relationship to your own family is a very strong vibrational connection. And so what you're really describing is when you feel a connection to someone, what's happened is you've just met them on a vibrational wavelength and you can meet on any vibrational wavelength and it can feel like a strong connection. Sometimes you can meet somebody who's just willing to complain with you about the same things you're complaining about and they feel like your long lost soulmate because they'll stand by you. They'll be with you. They'll support you and defend you, you see. And so the best way to know that you've connected with someone who is really your non-physical counterpart is for you to hang around in that high, good feeling vibration for plenty of time so that you can tell when you've taken a dip. Because until you know whether or not you've taken a dip, you won't know how to recognize someone else. Because as we were saying earlier, when you connect with something, there is momentum even in the connection. When you're offering a vibration and someone else who's offering the same vibration is brought together by law of attraction, there is always a spark that feels like interest, you see. And so that's why you're wanting to differentiate between twin flame and soulmate. And to all of those things, we want to say all of you are soulmates to every one of you. In other words, that's the way you feel from your non-physical energy vantage point. Every single one of you has the potential of enormous harmony with every other being who is present in this time space reality. But of course, as you've lived life, you've put into your vortex other preferences besides just being energetically aligned. You want some of your physical awareness awareness is to be the same. There are many things that life has caused you to want and you have the potential of satisfying every one of them, you see. And so we would spend no time looking around a crowd and trying to acknowledge which ones are soulmates and which ones aren't because the only thing that matters is are you a mate to your own soul in this moment are you a vibrational mate are you vibrational in alignment with your own soul and if the answer to that is yes then you'll be able to find those who are a vibrational match to theirs and two who come together who are each individually in vibrational alignment with who they are is what we consider to be the greatest harmony not sameness not same attitude about all same things but same vibrational harmonics which makes for the best kind of relationship enough difference in interest but the ability to be in alignment so that you can extract the best from each other at all times yes and then I just have one question about being in the vortex and, s and staying in the vortex. Like what are, I don't know. Some... Well, as our explanation to all of you has evolved over time, the reason that we began talking about the existence of the vortex is because we wanted you to find a way of accepting the progress of your creation before you could see the physical evidence of it. A woman the other day was talking about how she wanted $100,000 so she could travel. And we wanted her to understand that there was so much more that had gone into all of that long before the money would show up. So by the time an idea of something that you want is realized by you, there's so much momentum that it's like a sure thing that once you realize you want it, that it's going to come about. So much has already happened before, but most people don't realize that. They think a desire that hasn't manifested is far, far, far away. But a desire that hasn't manifested has all of this momentum of this vortex. And so over time, our explanation to you has evolved too, because we were saying, get into the vortex, get into the vortex, get into the vortex. And now we think that it is easier for you to understand. And we also said, sometimes you're in and sometimes you're out and sometimes you're in. It's not like a college degree where once you get your diploma, it's yours forevermore. It's a vibrational equivalency test. You're in alignment or you're not. But we have found that it is more effective to say to you, so here's this vortex, what's your relationship with it? Are you in the receiving mode of it? Because if you're in the receiving mode of this vortex, then there will be a smooth transfer of the vibrational frequency of the vortex into your mind, into your ideas, into your reflexes, into your impulses, into your rendezvous. Don't you ever wonder how thoughts turn to things? Well, that's how. 
these thoughts gather a lot of momentum but but if you haven't gathered the momentum that your creations have gathered then you're not going to be in the receiving mode and you're not going to match up with them and you're going to keep yearning for them and hoping for them but you're not going to be believing them and knowing them you see so the way you maintain a better relationship with your vortex we like that way of saying it better the way you maintain a better relationship with your vortex is by caring about how you feel and when you touch the hot stove acknowledge that it's hot and try to find a thought of relief in our analogy the way you take your hand from the stove is by saying something to yourself that makes it less painful be aware of what I'm thinking be aware of what you're thinking and try to find a thought that soothes you in some way and usually that means find a more general thought you're usually too specific you're usually more specific than you are ready to be so if you step into a more general place and you just continue to practice it it's a lot for us to ask of you to want to feel good but that is the homework you have to want to feel good you have to want to feel good enough that you're willing to acknowledge when you don't and try to find a thought that feels a little better and the best plan the best process is to when you first wake up acknowledge that you do feel good unless you do that thing you do that causes it to diminish because in the same way that this stove is hot and we want you to try to find a less hot thought when you wake up you feel here and we want you to try to maintain that thought rather than being willing to dip down into the thoughts that don't feel so good because there's a tendency to wake up Esther once we began talking about when you sleep your momentum subsides and so when you wake up it's a whole new beginning and you have the potential of supporting or maintaining that higher emotion or that higher vibration when you first wake up than at any other time during the day and so Esther would wake up and she would say oh I'm awake it's a new day and for a few days she felt a sort of tension to maintain that like don't think 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 or don't remember don't remember but just the awareness that it is a new day and so Esther has learned if she'll get right into it the sooner she turns music on in the house the better the day goes the sooner she brushes her teeth the better the day goes there are just some things that once you do it you just naturally feel better so just keep doing the things that feel better thinking the thoughts that feel better remembering the things that feel good in other words just tend to your vibration care about feeling good and before you know it you'll be so accustomed to this high flying vibration that when you're not there the slightest thought will feel like chainsaw massacre on your hand <laughs> the slightest negative dip will just feel terrible you'll just get so you cannot cope in those negative emotions at all just having a negative thought about someone's like machine gunning them down perhaps you should have been warned on the disclaimer that you signed coming in that you can't go back from this once you know this you can't go back that once you sit in a room like this and your vibration rises to the degree that your inner being is pulsating you'll never be happy again unless you're there sorry there was no warning about that you can't go back and so that's what makes us never worry about you we know that once you taste it you'll crave it because that's where your inner being is and that's who you are and that's what you want and who wouldn't choose clarity over confusion who wouldn't choose happiness over sadness or sureness over uncertainty or thrill over depression in other words of course it's what you want you see so you just take it a little bit of the time stand next to the horse for a while let it breathe its happiness in your direction lean on it if it'll let you <laughs> then climb on my other question is you channel source do we all have the ability to do that and without how exception do we, how do we access that well think about everything that we've been saying here today so we're broadcasting yes so Esther through meditation she didn't know what she was doing she didn't know she was getting herself into this or she probably would have said no she didn't want to be this weird for this long but through meditation she allowed her vibration to rise and then one day she could hear us and it's the same with all of you in other words isn't the receptive mode just that when you release enough resistance that you're on the frequency of what's being broadcast then aren't you gonna hear it without exception no exception Esther's not special in that regard she just released resistance she didn't start out with much she was living happily ever after newly in a relationship living happily ever after happier than she'd ever been in her life and then sat to meditate 
right there, boom, there we were. Is it like voices or is it like something that you, I mean like synchronicities in the world? I don't... Every experience is different. Okay. For Esther, it's a thought so strong in her mind she cannot deny it. And not even a thought that she thought, a thought that's just there. A thought that's just there that needs to be said. We aren't whispering words in her ear, that's so slow. Okay, thank Good? you. Yes. If you have a desire, you light up. If you have a desire that you're worried about, it sort of puts your light out. Here you go. Sometimes you have a strong desire and some resistance too, but your desire is so strong, we see it anyway. Hi. We are. <laughs> I don't know that I have any problems today. That's not what this is about. This isn't about problems, this is about co-creating at its best. Okay. A little tug of war here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is going good. As it should. This is even better. Because things are always working out for you. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah. So in this moment in time, this powerful now, this juncture where you meet you, and of course you meet you all the time, but here in this environment, you're meeting you in a stronger way. So what is it that you want to proclaim? What impulse is flowing through you? Everything seems to work out for me. A little at a time. It's just something that you know. It's something that I have observed from listening. So you don't worry about the timing of it. You trust the timing of I it. I trust it. Yeah, and when an impulse comes, is that your the indication to you that the timing for at least this impulse is now? When I ponder a thought and it comes to pass in a positive way by clarifying it, then I count that as it worked out so do you wait for the manifestation to confirm the impulse or are you getting better at acknowledge the impulse even before can you feel more and more what is going to work out in a stronger way what we're asking is do you believe that you are getting better at focusing in other words because this is what we want you to hear from us this is what we feel so strongly around you so you figured this stuff out you've been listening and you figured it out and now you're in a place where you are let us begin again so sometimes people say how deliberate of a creator should I be because at first we say you create your own reality and you said oh good and then we said you create your own reality and you said oh no because it felt like responsibility and then we said, be deliberate about what you think. And then you said, oh, cancel, cancel, as you worried about the thoughts that you were thinking. And then we said, get into the receiving mode and receive what the vortex has whipped up for you. And now a lot of you are in a sort of aligned place where often you receive the impulse, but you are in a sort of wait and see place rather than in a now it's time to turn on the juice of focus place. And that really is what we want to say to you is that you have figured out step one and you've figured out step two and you've figured out step three. And now as you focus more specifically on the things that are important to you, you're now in a place where the universe will begin to deliver to you with more precision, the details of what you want, because you're right. Things are always working out for you. And that really feels good. And you've worked most of the details out in step one, but there is such an exhilarating life force that flows through you when you understand how all of this works. And then you begin to focus. It's almost as if you are dictating to the universe, the details of what you want. So we've been saying to people, if you're not really in alignment and not steadily in alignment, then talking, talking, talking about what you want works against you. But if you are steadily in alignment, if you are trusting the laws of the universe and you are feeling good about your own worthiness as you are, then the more detailed you give to the specifics about what you want, the more satisfying the experience is. And so that's our message for you. That's what you lighted up in the back of the room.
Be the one between how you feel right now and how your inner being feels.